welcome everyone. This is the video tutorial on how to figure out what we're doing for the flame test lab report. Um, and this is for the college prep classes. And what you'll see in your um, in your lab here is the title is the flame test of metals for virtual learning. And our purpose here is to observe and identify ions using flame tests. Okay, so we know that our atoms are going to have electrons in their orbitals around the nucleus. And then when we heat them up or add electricity the way that we did with our last Lab, they are going to jump up to an excited state and when they fall back down that's when they are going to release the energy in the form of light and different atoms have different electrons and different ground states and different excited states so we get different colors all right so the highest energy is going to be our blue light and the lowest energy is going to be our red light okay so what we'll see here are these beautiful individual characteristic colors by all these different elements okay lithium has this color sodium potassium rubidium it's really only the element on the the metal on the front okay um it's not going to be the back end that doesn't matter um because the chlorine isn't going to have a flame test the calcium the strontium the barium the copper thallium all of that okay if we were in class we would be using wood splints and burners and all these different kinds of metals with our safety goggles and you would be able to observe them so we're going to try our best to mimic that now okay first things first we want to answer these pre-lab questions you need to define a proton a ground state an excited state a frequency and a wavelength so that we can end up um, making sure that we know what we're expecting here. So you can look in your book or in your notes for those. I wouldn't Google them because they're liable to give you something that comes from like a physics textbook. And we want to know how it works here in chemistry. So the procedure, if we were in class, would be to get our different ions. Um, and basically you put the stick into the hottest region of the flame of the Bunsen burner. And that's going to be on the inside of the inner blue cone and then you make your observations okay so for the virtual settings since we don't have all this stuff at your homes we are going to click here to run the flame test lab which is going to be this lovely YouTube video right here okay so uh, this was made several years ago and this person here has a Bunsen burner and then they are going to put in different um, metals into their Bunsen burner and you're going to observe the colors that you see so you can see that there is a lovely little flame right there okay this is the order that they go in I would put on the closed captioning so that you can make sure that that color goes with that flame. And in your lab report, you can write down what your observations for your flames are here. Be as descriptive with your colors as possible. If it's like a reddish purple or a pinkish purple, make sure that you write all of those down right here. Okay, so if you need to, you can split your screen into the 50-50 and you can kind of watch on one side while you write on the other side. All right, so um, definitely make sure the closed captioning, the CC is on so that you know which element you're talking about as you go through all the different colors and um, make your observations there. Okay, the more descriptive you are with your flame colors, the easier it will be for you for your unknowns. Okay, another thing that you can do is if you have a Java working, a Java capable computer, so this might not work on um, some of the Chromebooks, but you'll see, you can actually um, mimic the flame test lab for yourself. So you'll see here we have sodium, 
you can move the flame loop a little bit and you can see that it changes the color and the emission of the spectra up here. You can change your lithium and you have strontium. It doesn't matter if it's strontium nitrate or strontium chloride, it will give you the same color. Here's your potassium, which is a lovely purple. And then you have your calcium, your copper, and your barium. So really fun and easy to put those in there. And again, all of our elements have different colors because of their different numbers of electrons. Okay, so that brings us down to naming that unknown ion. So if you click on unknown A, it'll take you to this picture right here. And according to what you saw up here, you should be able to identify the picture with what was observed above. Same thing for unknown B, same thing for unknown C, unknown D, and unknown E. Now be careful, some are very close to one another. This one's a little more orangey, and this one is a little bit more reddish purpley. So you wanna make sure that you are as descriptive as possible with this portion of your lab. Okay, then when you are all finished, you're gonna come through and do the analysis and conclusion questions. And you can ask, uh, are there several questions that are asked of you? You can answer them to the best of your ability. Um, would the flame test be useful for detecting metal ions present in a mixture of metal ions? Explain why or why not. The energy of light increases with the order red, yellow, green, blue, violet. List the elements. So first you would list the element that was red. Then you would list the element that was yellow. Then the element that gave the green flame. Then the blue. And then the violet flame last. And then for number three, you'll see a little review of what we did um, with the uh, flame test lab. And that is going to be to change your wavelengths into nanometers. So we have 589 nanometers for sodium. It gives it its characteristic color. We're going to change it to meters. One nanometer is one times 10 to the negative ninth meters. One nanometer, one times 10 to the negative ninth meters. So then when you put that in the calculator, you get 5.89 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. And then if we calculate our frequency from our wavelength, we're going to use the speed of light right here. So if C equals lambda times F, our wavelength times our frequency, if we want the frequency by itself, we're going to divide both sides by lambda. So we get frequency equal to C over wavelength. So that's 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And then we're going to divide that by this wavelength right here. All right, this wavelength is going to be 5.89 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. And then we see that our meters and meters cancel out and you will get your frequency in S to the negative one. Okay, that is your um, reciprocal seconds. And then lastly, calculate your energy. Okay, energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency, which is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. Then you're going to want to plug in your answer for here. Um, you're gonna bring that down here. And then you will see that your seconds and per seconds cancel out, leaving your answer in joules. Okay, so a little uh, review of that for you. And then lastly, during the holiday season, home improvement stores sell pre-treated logs that burn green and red. What are the ions that they are treated with? And in the summer, where do you see an application of this lab? Hint, 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 look, think up in the sky during the holidays. And then again, uh, we set you up for the conclusion template.
where you tell me the purpose of the lab, you go over the seven ions and what their colors are, and what the identification of the unknown was, how you were able to match them up, what could be a source of error, and what else we could test or what else we could do to make sure that we had the exact same purpose. Okay, if you need help with your conclusion template, you can always click on um, the links that are embedded up in the top. And then lastly, in conclusion, restate the purpose of the lab. All right, so good luck with the lab. I hope um, you have fun doing this. And if you have any questions, let me know. Ta-ta for now.